Hello Linux fans, Rob here and thanks for watching Linux Quest. For some time now I've been contemplating on whether or not to do a little news bit video that I could release maybe every two weeks, maybe once a month, we'll see. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and release video one of Quest Byte News, just a bite of news from the Linux world. You know with Linux there's always something changing, there's always something new on the horizon. You know whether it's desktop environment, whether it's hardware support. Um, so. I decided to go ahead with this and we'll see how it goes. I want to mix in two, I think, um, questions that we have from Linux Quest viewers, things like that, and my plan is to maybe put that towards the end of each Quest Byte News segment. I want to try to keep these fairly short as well. Uh, speaking of that, I've got a little timer running here, so let's set that up at uh, seven minutes. I want to try to keep these around you know, seven to ten minutes maximum. and. Um, so with that all said, let's just jump into some of the news. And to begin, to begin with, I'm going to start out with a little update. As some of you know, I've been running KDE Neon as my daily driver, and I've really enjoyed it. I've had a few updates um, that caused a few little quirky issues from time to time, but nothing major. Uh, it's been fast. It's been responsive. It's been stable. Um, you know, and I've really enjoyed it. But with that all said, I'm kind of getting that itch to maybe... Uh, run something else as my daily driver. And so I'd like to start out the Quest Byte News Episode 1 with a question. What is it about Linux that causes you to distro hop? I'm curious to hear from you because for me, there is nothing right now. There's no logical reason that I should, should switch from uh, KDE Neon because it's doing everything I need it to do for the most part. It's, I'm going to say, 97.9% .9 the way there. But I've got this itch to switch to something else for a daily driver. So I'm very curious to hear, why do you switch? Why do you distro hop? What is it about Linux that causes you to jump from one distribution to another? Is it the desktop environment? Is it hardware support? Is it software support? So I'd really like to hear from you. Look forward to hearing um, your replies. Is it just that you get bored, you know, whatever it is, love to hear from you. All right, so let's move on to some news. And while we're on the subject of KDE, for those of you who follow KDE and you like KDE, uh, there's some big news. So we're going to jump into that. Um, KDE has released five, Plasma 5.8, and I'm kind of reading that it's uh, possibly going to be a long term support release. And let's jump over here to KDE News. Well, we are there. That's apparently where we are. Um, there we go. KDE News. And let's scroll down to what is new in Plasma. They have a new unified boot to shut down artwork set up here. So now you get a complete breeze design from start up to shut down. And I, just based on these small images here, uh, let's see if we can get a larger image. You know, that, that looks very clean and modern, although it's just a black background. But I welcome, I welcome seeing um, those changes because uh, anything they can do to improve the overall look, the overall feel, and just the, uh, the UI improvement alone I think will be good. But it also allows for greater customability. Cust customizability I cannot talk this evening for instance all plasma wallpaper plugins such as slideshows and animated wallpapers can now be used on the lock screen so I think you know just from a uh, an appearance uh, aspect it's gonna it's gonna be nice to have those features let's move on down so for language support and what this will do uh, uh, with this right to left language support it's going to broaden the user base because now you'll have languages such as Hebrew and Arabic, which um, read from right to left. Um, this, this will improve, I think, user reach just by having that built into KDE. And improved applets next up. So the virtual desktop switcher, now known as Pager, and when the list applets have been rewritten using the new task manager. Um, they have introduced, which they introduced this in Plasma 5.7. So this allows them to use the same data set, data set as the task manager and improves their performance while reducing memory consumption. 
any time they can make improvements that reduce memory consumption, it's a good thing. So happy to see this. Now, also in this, the virtual desktop switcher has acquired an option to show only the current screen in a multi-screen setup and now shares most of its code with the activity switcher applet. So that's also going to be nice if you're using multiple uh, screens. Uh, you can choose to just show uh, the current screen in a multi-screen setup. And let's move on down here. For the sake of time, we'll get through this simplified global shortcuts. So the global shortcut configuration has been simplified to focus on the most common task, and that is launching applications. Building upon the jump list functionality added in previous releases, global shortcuts can now be configured to jump to specific task within an application. So if you think about that, that's a huge improvement there for those of you who um, really use the keyboard and you like your jump list, you know, from, from certain commands. Um, so these global shortcuts can now be configured to jump to a specific task within an application. Thanks to our Wayland effort, we can finally offer so-called modifier-only shortcuts, enabling you to open the application menu just by pressing the meta key. Due to popular demand, this feature also got backported to the X11 session. So I know that Globe, this will be a welcome um, Im improvement to KDE. Other improvements. This release sees many bug fixes in multi-screen support. That's a big plus. I know that I've heard from various users that um, you know, multi-screen support has been shoddy. And this comes together with QT 5.6.1 and should improve your experience with docking stations and projectors. Now KWIN Plasma Windows Manager now allows compositing through LLVM pipe, easing the deployment on exotic hardware and embedded devices. Now that there is a standardized and widely used interface for applications to request turning off compositing, the unredirect full screen option has been totally removed and so they're saying that this leads to stability issues and well that I'm sorry that the unredirect full screen option which has been removed because it led to stability issues and because of that was already disabled for many drivers. All right so let's move on down here and this is big news so we're in Wayland Plasma on Wayland has come a long way in the past months, while our long-term support promise does not apply to the fast-evolving Wayland stack, we think it is ready to be tested by a broader audience. There will still be minor glitches and missing features, but we are now at a point where we can ask you to give it a try and report bugs. Notable improvements, so we have support for XDG Shell, so that's good. If you've if you've ever been to um, you know a website where you you see a link that says install and you click on that without XDG you may get a pop-up or an error error window that launches as opposed to the actual install of the application so this will be excellent to see and then it goes on to say that GTK plus applications are now supported so um, so very happy to see that much improved touchscreen support, and that's always good. Support for touchpad gestures. The infrastructure is there. There aren't any gestures by default yet, so that's a bummer, but it's nice that they're getting there. And then the sliding pop-up effect is now supported. And then clipboard contents are synced between X11 and Wayland applications. So this is a nice rundown of improvements for um, for Plasma 5.8, you know, again, I'm a, I'm a KDE uh, desktop fan, and um, you know, some of the other, you've got desktop widgets, um, download wallpapers, and uh, widgets, and effects, and icons, and everything right from within um, Workspace Theme, and that's something I think that, you know, that's one of those things, there are distributions it's just difficult sometimes to get the theme uh, installed and applied. So if we go here, we get an option to get new theme, and it will 
populate the list and you can sort it and it just makes it very easy to install themes and icons and that kind of thing. So that's what's in the news here. We're, we're winding down on time and this first Quest Byte news bit here will uh, be a little longer than the seven minutes. But um, I had a request and I'm going to I'm going to say anonymous at this point because it was a private message. But I had a request from a viewer to Linux Quest who helps people to install Linux on their aging systems. And these are systems that are, you know, running XP and um, on older hardware. And um, I was very impressed because this person helps people who are disabled and he converts them over to open source software. Uh, be it, you know, um, LibreOffice or OpenOffice, as well as various Linux distributions based on their hardware. And so, you know, I'm just, I think that's an awesome thing to, um, to do, number one. And number two, that's just another, um, you know, strong case for Linux and open source software. But the question was, is there free and open source data migration software available? Now, I am not aware of any. I'm going to do some searching, but I wanted to just go ahead and ask that question for our, our first Quest Byte news bit. If any of you viewers are aware of data migration software that could be used in a way such as you install the software and then it would go in and pull any documents, PDFs, photos, videos, anything that might be valuable data that it would pull that in and back that up so that you could then migrate that back over uh, into the new Linux environment. And uh, I know there are multiple ways that you can do that and there are apparently you know several applications that are paid applications that do that. Uh, but if you're aware of anything free and open source that this person could use that would be greatly appreciated and just message back please under this Quest Byte video news. We appreciate it and that's it for Quest Byte. Thanks for watching.